In this example, we're gonna write a partial fraction decomposition for the rational function x over x squared minus five x plus six. So the first thing to do when you do a partial fraction decomposition is to check, is it a proper fraction? Which in this case, the answer is yes. The numerator is degree one, the denominator is degree two. So this is a proper fraction. If it was improper, we'd have to do long division. So we go to the next step. Uh, the next step here is you need to factor the denominator. So we have this, this denominator x squared minus 5x plus 6. It was a horrible, horrible thing that someone multiplied it out. It's like you had your perfect figurine of all of your bobblehead Marvel characters. And then the three-year-olds came and knocked them all over. It's a horrible thing to do, multiplying out a denominator. Now this one's not too hard to pick up. We need factors of 6 that add up to be negative 5. We can get away with x minus 3 and x minus 2 as our magic pair. And so then that then gives us our denominator, right? So we can rewrite the original fraction as x over x minus three times x minus two. And this process is only as difficult as factoring the denominator can be. And so for the most part, you're gonna see in examples and in the corresponding homework that the denominators are typically be factored because we don't want this to be in a huge factoring problem, but you would have to factor them at this step. The next part, Oftentimes you can skip one, steps one and two because the question is generous in that regard. The next step is to look for the template. Back in the day, Microsoft Word had a good friend, uh, which we called Clippy, right? He was a paperclip for which if you start typing in things like to whom this may concern or start typing in your resume, Clippy would appear on the screen and be like, I see that you're writing a letter. I see that you're writing a a resume or something like that. And they would give you hints on how we could do this. Like, oh, I have some templates already made for you. Uh, a template meaning that the document is started for you, but it has some fields that you have to fill in your own personal information because Clippy doesn't know what your last job was or anything like that. So we wanted the same thing with our partial fraction decomposition. Our template will look something like the following. Our original fraction X times X minus three and X minus two. Because after all, what we're trying to do is we're trying to come up with two partial fractions, two fractions which add together to give us this fraction. For which, when we look at the denominator, the denominator is supposed to be the least common denominator of these two fractions right here. So this actually tells us what the denominators are going to be. The denominators are going to be X minus three and X minus two. Because if we add these two fractions together, the least common denominator would be X minus three times X minus two. And therefore, uh, let me let me highlight that this is a three right here, okay? And so the denominators have to add up to be, that they have to combine to give minus x minus three and x minus two. So our partial fractions are gonna look like this. But what are the numerators? Well, this is, this is where the, the idea about it being a proper fraction is important here. If this function is proper, then we can assume that these partial fractions are likewise proper fractions. So the two propers add together to give you a proper fraction. Well, if the denominator is a linear, x minus three, and this is a proper fraction, the numerator needs to be a smaller degree. But the only degree smaller than, than x minus three would be zero, which is a constant. So it turns out the numerator is just a number, a number we don't yet know, we'll call it capital A. Same thing for this one, what's the numerator gonna be? Well, if this is a proper fraction, then that means the denominator needs to have a bigger degree than the numerator, which only leaves the possibility of degree zero, which would be another constant. So the template of this, of this partial fraction decomposition is gonna look like a over x minus three plus b over x minus two. It doesn't matter what you call the numerators, they're just gonna be numbers. Uh, oftentimes we use capital letters to denote them here. All right, and so then we have this equation. This template gives us an equation, x over x minus three times x minus two is equal to a over x minus three plus b over x minus two. The next step here, to solve this partial fraction decomposition is we're gonna clear the denominators. That is, we're gonna take the equation above and we're gonna multiply the left and the right hand side by the least common denominator, which is X minus three and X minus two. We do that on the left, we do that on the right. Now the left is gonna be pretty easy, it just cancels out. And so we end up with the left hand side just being X. This will be the numerator of the original rational function. On the right-hand side, you do have to distribute these things. And when you have a times x minus three times x minus two over x minus three, what you're gonna see here is that the x minus threes are gonna cancel, leaving you just an x minus two. So you get a times x minus two. And then for the second one, you get b times 
x minus 3 and x minus 2 all over x minus 2. You're going to see the same thing here, that the x minus 2s are going to cancel, leaving you just with the x minus 3. And so now the denominators are cleared. Step 5 here. We are going to destroy values of x. We want to annihilate things. So destroy, right? What does this mean? Um, this destruction phase, this annihilation phase, means that you're going to pick values of x that make the denominators go to zero. <gasps> That's what are you talking about? It's like dividing by zero is the same thing as like dropping an atomic bomb on SUU. Why would we do that? Well, notice that when we cleared the denominators, there are no more denominators, so we can actually plug in things that would previously made the denominators go to zero. So what that means for us here is that we're going to plug in, for example, x equals 2. That made, the, that made this denominator up here go to 0. When we plug in x equals 2 into the equation, see what happens. You're going to get 2 is equal to a times 2 minus 2 plus b times 2 minus 3. And that simplifies to be 2 equals, well, you're going to get 0a minus b. Uh, which gives us 2 equals minus b, that tells me that b should equal negative 2. All right. Um, so we annihilated a by plugging in x equals 2. On the other hand, what if we were to plug in x equals 3? x equals 3 would give us that 3 equals a times 3 minus 2 plus b times 3 minus 3. You can see what happens this time by plugging in x equals 3. The 3 minus 3 will go to 0. That disappears. And you're left with 3 equals 1a, which is just a right here. So we found the coefficients for our partial fraction decomposition. And so then in the end, we get x over x minus 3 and x minus 2. This equals the a value, which was, remember, let's double check what we had before. Right, a was above the x minus 3, b was above the x minus 2. So we end up with 3 over x minus, oh, I already forgot what it was, 3 minus 2 over x minus 2. And I better double check again to make sure I didn't break it. Oh, that was the right one. Good. And so this then gives us our partial fraction decomposition. We were able to add together, or that is, we found the partial fractions that add together to give us this original fraction right here. And you can check, I'll leave it up to the viewer here to check that 3 over x minus 3 minus 2 over x minus 2, that if you were to add these things together, you'll get back the original fraction. Let's look at another example here. Let's go through it a little bit quicker this time. So we have 3x over x plus 2 times x minus 1. Is this thing proper? Right? Could this sit with the Queen of England? The answer is yes. Great, it's a proper fraction. The top is linear, the denominator is quadratic. Uh, then the next step is to factor the denominator. We're done. So that's with that step, that's great. So we move immediately to the template here. We have 3x over x plus 2 and x minus 1. So our template's going to look like a over x plus 2 plus b over x minus 1. We then clear the denominators. We're going to get 3x is equal to a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 2. You'll notice that the number that gets attached to the to the a right here was the number with the denominator was missing and the same thing with the b the number get, the, the factor getting attached to the b was the one it was missing so we get 3x equals a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 2 let's pick these annihilating values here let's pick for example x equals 1 if you pick x equals 1 the left hand side becomes a 3 a would be annihilated and you'd be left with 3b 1 plus 2 is 3 there so b equals 1 that was pretty quick quick there. Um, if we take x equals negative 2, that's another annihilating value. That would annihilate b in this consideration here. If you plug in x equals negative 2, you'll get negative 6 on the left-hand side, and you're going to get negative 3a, which means a equals 2. So our partial fraction decomposition then would be you get 2 over x plus 2, and then you're going to get 1 over x minus 1.
like so. This gives us our partial fraction decomposition. And it's a really neat trick that as long as you like, you, you have your template, you clear the denominators, you plug in these annihilators, and this will give you the, the numerators of this partial fraction. And you can check two over X plus two plus one over X minus one does in fact give us the correct partial fraction decomposition. Just add the fractions together and you'll see that you ended up with what we started with.